Hi folks, this is Killington, and welcome to World of Warcraft Classic. We are beginning our journey today with going through how to play the game, but also just some basic gameplay and leveling up. And we're just going to have a good time. So we're starting today with an undead rogue character whose name is Killington. And I want to give some basics as to what you're looking at with the user interface because not everybody's going to know what they're seeing here. We'll stop at the start at the top left. This is my character. There's his pretty little face. His name, this is his health. He's got 65 hit points. And as a rogue, he uses energy. and He's at 100% energy right now. This is his level. It is level 1. And that's basically all you need to know about that for now. Over the top right, we have our mini-map. This text depicts where I am on the map. Here I have the map itself, and as you can see, a lot of it is black, and that's because I'm inside a building. Once we get outside, you'll see that it will open up and it will depict the landscape around me. Here we have a clock. You can click on it if you'd like. You can set an alarm as well. I do like to use 24-hour mode. You can zoom in if you'd like, and you can zoom out. And if you notice, the icon here is me. It is my arrow. It is my character's point of view. And I have my camera facing him right now, but we will change that. Also, nighttime just turned into day. So at 5.30 on this realm, that must be when the sunlight turns over from the night. It does try to mirror real world um, light, nighttime and day hours based on the realm. And if you notice my realm time is the same as my local time, and that's what I like to do. So over on the bottom on the left, we have our chat menu. I am going to alter this really quick. I'm going to right click here and I'm going to unlock the window. You see this little corner arrow thing came up. I'm just going to do that. I don't want to necessarily... Actually, we'll fix that later. But we're going to lock it back. <coughs> There's a lot on here that you can do. You can create a new window. You can rename the window. You can change your font size. You can join different channels. And that we will talk about when we get to our first city. And you can make it non-interactive where you cannot do anything with this at all. And then the combat log. And I've not done anything, but you can see my actions and then what happened to me. Here we have chat channels, which I don't use. Chat is the general chat, and then we have some scrolling. <coughs> so we're going to put this down. We're going to take this down back to the bottom and go over a bunch of stuff down here. This is our main user interface bar. We have here action bars. 12 action bars. I have them labeled how I specifically like them. We'll get to them in a little bit. This is our mini bar, is what I call it. Help, your main menu, which is for me is the escape button. The world map, which is M. Social, which is O, for like your guild. Quest log is L. Spellbook and abilities for P, and your character is C. So everything that is in parentheses in yellow is a, a hotkey. So if I press C, I'm going to go to my character page. But I can also click on this here, too. And unclick it. Here I have a key ring. And then he's, here I have empty containers. Because this is where I'm going to put bags when I acquire them. As for right now, I have a backpack. And I'm going to move some stuff around here. So moving things around. 
I just click and move it. I like the hearthstone there. I also like to move some stuff around here as well. But first, I want to open up the rest of my action bars. So I'm going to go to the main menu. Actually, I'm going to hit escape to get there. We're going to go to interface options. Number one, I want to auto loot. It's the default action when you click on a lootable thing. Body, essentially. But if I wanted to, I could hold down one of these keys to have a loot key. I don't want to. Um, combat. Let's look at combat. Mm, I think we're good there. Display. We are good there. Social. I'm going to block that. Now, action bars. I like all of the action bars. Okay. So, I want to move some things around in my action bar. Oh, I do want to turn this up font. It needs to be up. Okay. Oh, there we go. I thought I could drag it in a little bit. So that was just a right-click drag up there. So I am going to, with things that are already placed on my action bar, I can't just click it because that will you that will make me use that act, that button and use that item or spell. So I'm going to hold shift and move it. You see I have numerous action bars now. I've got all of these action bars. Now, my character turned around because I clicked a button on my mouse. If I want to change direction with my character, I use my mouse to navigate. You can use, you know, WASD if you would like. You can use arrow keys. It doesn't matter, but I will say that the mouse by far is faster, especially the newer mouses. So you want some better turning capability you're going to want to go and learn how to use the mouse so my mouse if I want to turn my character I hit the right mouse button that will turn my guy if I want to turn just my camera I'm going to hit the left mouse button and that's the camera so movement very simple if you want to move forward, for me, I press both mouse buttons. And then I can just steer with my mouse hand as long as my right hand finger, right mouse button is pushed down. I'm going to zoom out using my mouse wheel. And I jump using my space bar. I do have auto run equipped to a key binding. I will briefly just show you key bindings. Feel free to go and check it out. We'll go to the escape menu and key bindings. And I have all my key bindings that I like set up here. So for me, all I do is I do press auto run and then I don't even have to touch my mouse, but I do have to still navigate with my right mouse button. So we will do that right now. Now, <clears throat> playing the game, this gentleman has an exclamation mark above his head because he has a quest for me. So I'm going to go and talk with him by right-clicking him. What do you require? And I need to go and speak to the shadow priest. He's at the chapel at the base of the hill. Watch your back. Now, I am not using any additional programs in this game right now. I might in the future. But as for right now, we are just playing the bare bones this is what you would see if you were starting out as a new player, as a new character. Oh, one other thing. Oh, sorry. We're going to go back to interface. Display. Where is it? No. I was on display. Instant quest text. 
I'll show you what that's like. This is what it was like when I first started playing this game, and I was like, oh, I do not remember that it did that. <clears throat> so, we're going to go downhill. And that looks an awful lot like a chapel. So we're going to go there. We're going to go inside. Now I see a yellow dot here, and it says Rude Awakening. This is, this indicates on my mini-map the person that I have to turn in my quest to. If you will notice, it's a little bit of a, a dimmed yellow color. But if I go inside the chapel, it's significantly brighter because the dimness means that the person is in a building. So let's show you what the non-instant. So it just kind of fades in. No and then this one, it's like you're actually reading it. And I can't accept this quest until I actually read it. Or it goes through it So we are going to be killing eight mindless zombies and eight wretched zombies. Okay. Let's go back to that instant quest text. Thank you very much. <clears throat> okay. So, I'm opening up my logbook. I'm looking and I'm reading this just a little bit more. The northern part of the village has become overrun with mindless ones and they must be destroyed. Destroy them and show them no mercy, our former brothers and sisters as they might be. The fallen are nothing but the Lich King's slaves. Alright, so we are headed north. And already I can see a mindless zombie here. And we're going to attack. So, as a rogue, I've got a couple of things I can use already for skills for attack. This one is attack. But this one here is Sinister Strike. It is one of my rogue spells. It costs 45 of my energy. I have to be in a melee range. It's an instant cast, an instant spell. It requires a melee weapon. And it causes 3 damage in addition to my normal weapon damage. It also awards 1 combo point. Well, combo points are the second part of a rogue's um, resources. So as a rogue, you build up your combo points, and then you use them with finishing moves. And I do have a finishing move right here. Eviscerate. It, costs, it does cost energy. This one costs 35 energy. And it's a finishing move that causes damage per combo point, increased by attack power. So the more points that I have, it's gonna cost it's gonna cause more damage. And if I have a lot of attack power, it's going to be the t the higher range of that um, the higher part of that range of the damage. So let's uh, let's see how this works. So I'm gonna get up to melee range. This is what my combo points look like. And we're gonna spend it. And we killed them. So we're gonna go through and kill a bunch more. We've got a lot of people to take care of here. And as I'm going along, I am picking up items by right-clicking them. And I did get some frayed pants, and I think they're going to be a little bit more, a little bit better armor than what I've got on currently. So I'm going to hit shift. Yes. And I can compare my items. So my thug pants are only two armor and these are four. I'm going to right click them and it automatically goes to where it needs to go. You can drag and drop if you'd like, but I find that <coughs> comparing them and then just right-clicking it to put it where it needs to go because it knows where it's supposed to go. That works just as that works just as The only thing that you would want to possibly drag and drop is for rings and for trinkets because you have two of each. Alright, we've got four mindless zombies. We need to get some wretched zombies. 
Now I got a belt here. But this belt is male. I cannot use it. Otherwise I would put that on. And that, friends, is us leveling up. We have just reached level 2. I've gained some hit points, some strength, some agility, and some stamina. No intellect, as it is nothing that I really need. But I might on occasion. Oh my gosh, I need more wretched zombies. Like a lot of them. here and I just hit shift but I don't have anybody equipped there so I'm just gonna right click it there we go I got some bracers and they're also male so I can't use those <coughs> so. so here we can compare the two five armor and three armor let's go for the five armor Braid <clears throat> bracers, those are cloth. I can use those. <clears throat> now I don't optimately want to use cloth for everything because I'm I have um, the ability to use leather. That is the stronger of the two. One of each, okay. <clears throat> of the two armor classes. So I'm going to be wanting to really focus on leather if I get that. But I'm not really getting much because I'm just starting out. So we're going with whatever we get. Okay, we are done. <clears throat> and again, we got that dim light dot up there. And we are going to go into back to the chapel and turn this in. And as we are level 2 now, if you'd noticed before, Novice Elreth had a gray exclamation point above our head because we were not the level yet to do that quest. What we are now. <laughs> so we have the choice between a couple of different things. We can choose some gloves. We can choose a cloak, but we already have a cloak, so we are going to go for the cloth gloves. I know it's just cloth, but still. Alright. Shadow Priest Sarvis now has two more quests for us. Rattling the rattle cages. We need to kill the rattle cage skeletons. Click accept that. And we also have the encrypted scroll. We need to go to our rogue trainer, David Trias. Trias. Okay. And then from Novice Elrith. Paws and wings. Wolves and bats. Okay. Trust no one. So, we had that, these cloth gloves. Let's put those guys on. And <clears throat> we got that scroll as well. We can read it. Take care not to ignore my words, Killington. This is the time for subterfuge and deceit throughout all nations. 
even our great undercity, everyone loyal to Sylvanas, is working towards creating a new era, one controlled by the Forsaken. And even though we possess no magical skills, nor will we take up weapons along our borders, we still have our own role to play. It's a little unnerving, but whatever. I didn't realize that Forsaken was trying to take over the world. But apparently, apparently we are. All right, David. I'm listening. Mm -mm. Shadow stalkers. Oh yes. Continue. So we're gonna actually talk, complete this, Beware and talk to him me. again because he's gonna train us in stealth. Gonna train. Okay. <clears throat> so I got a new spell. I'm gonna open up my spell book. That's P. And oh, we have a couple things down here. I'm gonna put this guy down here. Cannibalize. It is specific to the undead and it allows us to eat corpses to gain health. Yes, that is enjoyable, isn't it? subtlety is shine is blinking and there is my my self so I'm gonna attach that to my action bar and if you forgive me I have my certain places where I like my spells to be so I will put it where I want it to go and actually, this is a good time for us to say see you later, as I am in need of heading to my job. Yes, I have a day job. Alrighty. Well, folks, it's been a pleasure. I hope you continue on this journey with me. And I will see you in the next one. You take care. <laughs>